Hello, and hope you're having a good day. My name is Thomas Park, and I'm here to uh, discuss and introduce uh, a collaboration I just was uh, lucky, lucky enough and glad enough to take part in. Um, that collaboration um, was uh, a tribute to Ken. Um, Ken is a band that uh, formed in Germany, and um, over the years of my life, I've come back to again and again as one of my favorite uh, bands to listen to. Um, some say Can was a kraut rock band, which I think is pretty accurate. But I think there's also um, there are other uh, directions in music. Simply straight ahead rock uh, for, would be one. Um, psychedelic music, soundtrack music, um, definitely would want to use the word improvisational when describing Can because most of their work is done in, in at least a partly improvisational uh, style. Um, Can was um, appeared on the scene in the 60s and um, became over time uh, very, very listened to. Um, they're, they're the kind of band, they didn't have a whole lot of uh, top 40 single hits. There was the song Spoon, and then um, there's a song, I think it's called um, I Want More, I think it's how they ended up titling it. There were actually singles that became popularly successful, um, and still are listened to quite a bit. But the largest body of work is, or most of their music is improvisational, um, very interesting, uh, slightly tailored or, or simplified not simplified, how to put, um, unified or integrated, um, as opposed to a jam band like Fish, um, the songs can, uh, improvised, did have a kind of economy to them. I, I think to, to be really the, as close as I could say, it was psychedelia, but it also had the, the other aspect of, of, of unity where other jam bands were very loose and just all over the place. Um, I felt that Can had this property of being improvisational, but also keeping a particular uh, a range. And that, for me, that made it more um, compelling. That is to say, the aspects of Can that were more minimal and even Germanic were appealing to me. Um, and one of, the, one of the reasons I would listen to Can and not other uh, improv improvisationally based bands not too many of them. Um, so, uh, you know, in college, uh, if, if people are hanging out and, um, you know, talking about uh, cultural uh, topics and uh, dining together or, or recreating, we would often put Ken on and we listen to them uh, in the background while we talk about uh, various things. Um, they were, if people heard Ken, they would almost always recognize that was who. Um, I think I discovered them at the radio station where, on the campus where I went to university. Um, I did a radio show uh, 4 to 6 a.m. every Sunday. And um, in the stacks there were some albums. People would write in black marker on them uh, their, their reactions to the albums. And the Can albums, as I recall, had all of these really positive remarks. Must play, don't miss pure genius, you know, all over them, and I became, I really wondered what, what it was about the band, so I listened, and I, um, I enjoyed their kind of, um, compact and effective improvisation as well, some of the atonalities and the way they would use repetition, etc., um, but also the elements that were more free, freely moving, um, the combination, and I really liked the band, I enjoyed their style, over the years, of course, the members of Can got older, and so did I and everyone else. Uh, and at a certain point, of course, they started dying, passing away. And um, we've lost most of Can now to age or, or disease, sadly. Uh, more recently, in recent memory, um, Holger Zuke, who was very much a, a central driving creative force, I feel, in Can. Uh, someone who added a lot of his own personality to their works. And also um, their singer who 
really drove them to more success. Damo Suzuki uh, passed away uh, not too long ago as well. Um, and these deaths really actually created a very, a pretty, pretty recognized and recognizable uh, a reaction in the music community, uh, the one that I'm part of here, which is an international one. Many, many people commented with, with sadness, remarked with sadness on the passing of these uh, musicians, and in doing so demonstrated that they were admirers of Kian and that they enjoyed their music too. Um, it's a bit like, say, a movie uh, that begins as not a huge success, but later becomes a cult classic where everybody knows about it. But at first, not too many people had heard of it. And so, um, so this collaboration with Wolf, Mr. Wilfried Hanrath, who lives in Germany, and, and mainly then myself, Thomas Park, uh, well, I live in America. Um, together we, uh, our collaborations, we call ourselves Future Light. We have several other collaborative releases that I think are all quite good. Uh, this one we decided to, uh, to pay a, an homage or tribute to Ken uh, as we both admire their music and um, we both added our own elements and indeed um, larger tracks to this collaboration. So I'm very proud and happy to bring Future Light's uh, Can the Can collaboration to the world um, to, to pay a happy handshake and smile and some good memories and hopefully future listening too in regards to Ken and all the great works they did over the years. Um, so this was a joy to make and uh, I really like the result too. I hope you all do too. Have a great day.